Have you ever wondered what causes the devastating storms we call cyclones? These massive weather phenomena command our attention, and not just because of their raw power. They're also an integral part of grade 12 geography. Over the next few minutes, we'll embark on a journey to understand these awe-inspiring forces of nature. Our exploration will cover two main types of cyclones, mid-latitude and tropical. The former often seen in the temperate zones and the latter infamous for their association with hurricanes and typhoons. Each has unique characteristics and patterns which we'll delve into in detail. And because we know how important it is to ace those exams, we'll also provide some handy tips to help you remember key concepts and tackle those tricky exam questions. So, buckle up and prepare for an exciting ride into the heart of our planet's most powerful storms. Let's dive into the mysterious world of cyclones. Understanding cyclones starts with knowing the key terms. So let's dive into the world of cyclones with some essential jargon you'll need to know. First up, we have mid-latitude cyclones. These are large-scale storm systems that occur in the middle latitudes between the tropics and the polar regions. They are also known as extratropical cyclones and are usually associated with fronts and jet streams in the Earth's atmosphere. Next, we have tropical cyclones. These are intense storms that form over warm ocean waters near the equator. Tropical cyclones are characterized by their low pressure centers and numerous thunderstorms that produce strong winds and heavy rain. They are known by different names in different regions, hurricanes in the Atlantic, typhoons in the Pacific, and simply cyclones in the Indian Ocean. Now let's look at the eye of the cyclone. This is the calm, clear area at the center of the storm. Surrounded by the deadliest part of the cyclone, the eye wall, where the most damaging winds and intense rainfall occur. Next up, rain bands. These are bands of dense clouds that spiral outwards from the cyclone's eye, producing heavy rainfall and sometimes tornadoes. The Coriolis effect is another key term. It's the deflection of moving objects caused by the rotation of the Earth. In the context of cyclones, the Coriolis effect influences the direction of their spin. Finally, we have cyclone season. This is the time of year when most tropical cyclones form. The exact timing can vary by region, but it is generally when sea surface temperatures are warmest. With these terms in mind, we can start to understand how cyclones form and function. Mid-latitude cyclones are fascinating phenomena that occur between 30 degrees and 60 degrees latitude. These are large-scale weather systems that typically span between 1,000 and 2,500 kilometers across. They're often responsible for our daily weather changes, from sunny days to sudden downpours. So how do these mid-latitude cyclones form? Well, it starts with a clash of warm and cold air masses. The warm air rises over the cold air, leading to the creation of a low-pressure zone. The air's rotation, thanks to the Earth's spin, causes these air masses to swirl around the low-pressure center, forming a cyclone. Now these cyclones have distinct characteristics. For starters, they have a typical lifespan of several days to a week. During this time, they travel great distances, often across continents, driven by prevailing winds. The cyclone center, or eye, is an area of calm and low pressure, surrounded by a whirlwind of high-speed winds and precipitation. Mid-latitude cyclones impact our weather patterns significantly. When a cyclone passes over an area, it brings a sequence of weather changes. Initially, you'd experience warm, moist air and possibly light rain as the warm front approaches. This is followed by a brief period of calm as the eye passes over. Then comes the cold front with its heavy rain or snowfall and colder temperatures. But it's not all doom and gloom. These cyclones play an essential role in distributing heat and moisture around the Earth. They help moderate global climate and cleanse the atmosphere. So while they can be destructive, they're also a crucial part of our planet's weather system. Understanding mid-latitude cyclones is key to predicting weather patterns and preparing for potential storms. It's a dynamic process with countless variables, but with each cyclone we study, we gain more insight into these powerful weather phenomena. Now that we've covered mid-latitude cyclones, let's move to their tropical counterparts. Tropical cyclones, also known as hurricanes or typhoons, depending on where they occur, are some of the most powerful storms on Earth. So, what causes these formidable weather phenomena? Well, it all starts over warm ocean waters near the equator. 
When the surface water temperature rises above 26 degrees Celsius, the heat and moisture from the water are transferred to the air above, creating an area of low pressure. This process, termed as convection, triggers the formation of a tropical cyclone. The cyclone structure is unique, with a calm center called the eye, surrounded by a wall of thunderstorms known as the eye wall. The spiraling bands of rain that extend from the cyclone are called rain bands. The counterclockwise rotation of these storms in the northern hemisphere and clockwise rotation in the southern hemisphere is due to a phenomenon known as the Coriolis effect. Tropical cyclones are categorized by their wind speed. The weakest are called tropical depressions, then tropical storms, and finally hurricanes or typhoons when their winds exceed 74 miles per hour. Now let's talk about the impact of these cyclones. They are notorious for causing extensive damage to coastal regions. With strong winds, heavy rain, and storm surges, they often lead to flooding and destruction of infrastructure. They also pose a significant threat to marine and bird life. However, it's not all doom and gloom. Tropical cyclones also play a vital role in the Earth's heat budget. They help distribute heat from the equator towards the poles, maintaining a balance in the Earth's temperature. Understanding these storms is crucial, not only for your geography exams, but also for understanding our world. They remind us of the immense power of nature and the importance of respecting and preserving our environment. Now that we've covered the basics of cyclones, let's look at some tips for your exams. Studying for a geography exam can feel like navigating through a storm, but with the right strategies, you can ace it. Embarking on your journey in understanding cyclones, it's crucial to remember that geography is not about cramming facts and figures. It's about comprehending the world around us. It's about the why, not just the what. So when you're studying cyclones, don't just memorize the differences between mid-latitude and tropical cyclones. Instead, try to understand why they form, how they behave, and what impacts they have on different regions. Now let's talk about some practical strategies. First, start by creating a visual mind map. This map should include the key terms we've discussed, their definitions, and how they interrelate. Seeing these connections visually can really help cement your understanding. Next, make sure you're comfortable with diagrams. In geography, diagrams are a powerful tool for conveying complex processes. When it comes to cyclones, you should be able to draw and explain diagrams of their formation and their life cycle. Practice until it feels second nature. Another crucial tip is to break down long answers into manageable chunks. For instance, if a question asks about the impacts of cyclones, don't just write a long paragraph. Instead, break it down into categories such as environmental, economic, and social impact. This approach not only helps you organize your thoughts, but it also makes your answer easier to read and grade. Lastly, practice with past exam papers. This is a proven strategy to get a feel for the type and format of questions you might encounter. It can also help you gauge your understanding and identify any areas you may need to revisit. Remember, while it's important to know the facts, your focus should be on understanding the concepts. This will not only help you in your exams, but also in understanding the world around you. So as you prepare to face the whirlwind of your geography exam, remember these strategies. They will help you navigate through the storm with confidence. Remember, the key to success is understanding, not memorization. We've covered a lot today, so let's recap. We started by introducing cyclones and their significance in geography. We then looked at key terms associated with cyclones like eye, eye wall, and rain bands, among others. We dove deep into mid-latitude cyclones, discussing their formation over the ocean, their counterclockwise rotation in the northern hemisphere, and their impact on weather patterns. Next, we tackled tropical cyclones, understanding their formation over warm tropical waters, their intense winds, and heavy rainfall. We also took a look at the differences between these two types of cyclones, highlighting their unique characteristics. And let's not forget the exam tips. We went over some handy strategies for answering cyclone-related questions, emphasizing the importance of understanding the processes, and being able to explain them using the correct terminology. With this knowledge, you're well equipped to tackle any cyclone-related questions on your geography exam. Good luck.